గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ ఎక్సలెన్సీ ఫాలోనో అంబాసిడర్ ఆఫ్ పోర్చుగల్ ఇన్ పాకిస్తాన్ డిస్టింగ్విష్ గెస్ట్ చైర్మన్ అండ్ మెంబర్స్ ఆఫ్ కేసీఎఫ్ఆర్ లేడీస్ అండ్ జెంటర్మెన్ ఐఎమ్ కమాండర్ సదీద్ మలిక్ చీఫ్ ఎగ్జిక్యూటివ్ ఆఫీసర్ అండ్ సెక్రటరీ జనరల్ ఆఫ్ కరాచీ కౌన్సిల్ ఆన్ ఫారెన్ రిలేషన్స్ అ బ్రీఫ్ అబౌట్ కేసీఎఫ్ఆర్ KCFR was founded by late former Chief Justice of Pakistan, Justice Seydu Zaman Siddiqui. Senior Advocate Mr. Liyakat Bachchan, followed by former Chief of Naval Staff, Admiral and later Ambassador Shahid Karimullah and Ambassador Shahid Amin. Today's program will be moderated by our revered member board of governors mr arshad said hussain who is presently the managing director of uh, oxford university press may i now request mr arshad said hussain to welcome his excellency paulo navis pokino ambassador of portugal in pakistan mr arshad said hussain uh thank you commander malik uh, Uh, it's an honor for me to uh, moderate uh, this webinar uh, with his excellency uh, mr paulo nivis uh, pokino uh, ambassador of uh, portugal in pakistan uh, your excellency on behalf of uh, the chairman and members of the karachi council for foreign relations i would like to welcome you to this uh, webinar uh, we are looking forward to learning from you about uh, the age old relationship between uh, our two countries and how we can further improve this relationship uh, in the mutual interest of our countries before his excellency we will have an address by ambassador zehra akbari uh, who has been an envoy uh, to portugal she was uh, awarded the order of the aztec eagle by uh, the mexican government now may i request uh, Uh, ambassador zehra akbari to address uh, and tell us about uh, the history of diplomatic relations between pakistan and portugal pakistan and portugal established diplomatic relations on 7 november 1949 this was followed by the opening of a lower level portuguese mission on november 14 1949 in karachi The first Portuguese plenipotentiary minister presented his credentials in 1952. The Portuguese mission in Karachi was raised to the level of an embassy in 1958. The government of Pakistan opened in Lisbon a liaison office at CDA level in 1954. For a number of years our high commissioner in London was also covering Portugal as non resident ambassador in 1976 this was raised to the level of a resident ambassador and our presence in lisbon has since been maintained overall relations and contacts have remained warm and friendly the two sides where possible have all along coordinated their efforts at the united nations and other multilateral fora to support each other uh, in various uh, international matters including each other's candidatures pakistan and portugal have signed bilateral agreements relating to air services trade mutual investment and protection of investment avoidance of double taxation avoidance and prevention, prevention of fiscal evasion and a protocol of cooperation between the foreign service academy of pakistan and the portuguese diplomatic institute the pakistan portuguese parliamentary friendship group has existed in the portuguese parliament since 2006 similarly in the national assembly of pakistan since 2013 the parliamentary friendship group in both countries serve as a useful forum to promote parliamentary contacts and exchanges in conclusion let me restate that pakistan attaches great importance to its relations with portugal 
both in the bilateral context and within the framework of the European Union. The two countries have traditionally enjoyed cordial and friendly relations over the years. Thank you. I will now invite uh, His Excellency uh, Paulo Nevis uh, uh, Pusino, Ambassador of Portugal in Pakistan, for his plenary address. Uh, I would like to thank the Karachi Council on Foreign Relations for this opportunity to speak about Portugal and Pakistan and Pakistan and Portugal. I think the ambassador, in terms of the, the, the bilateral relationship, um, she made a very, uh, very interesting uh, historical overview, uh, which uh, for which I don't have much to add. Um, uh, but I would like also only to to say to, uh, um, to concentrate, for example, in the the issue of the the political bilateral consultations. We are preparing for this year in November a new a new edition of these uh, uh, co uh, political consultations. It, it is a little bit uh, already delayed because the last one was in 2018, uh, but uh, also the issue, the COVID, and then the EU presidency of Portugal so, um, delayed the, the, uh, this new. Um, the organization of, of this new edition of the political consultations. So now in November, um, we are, are working to have a fruitful uh, consultations. We have uh, different uh, two or three agreements pending uh, between the, uh, the two countries. And uh, it is very important to, to, to hold it regularly the, the consultations uh, as a mean, it, which is are very important for for the, the strengthening the friendship and strengthening the, the bilateral relation in itself. I also would like to say that so I arrived in Pakistan in 2019, and um, so uh, I, I, we changed the embassy, we changed the the, the facilities, the premises. Which a little bit out, were a little bit outside, so and uh, we also started to to renew the consular service, which was uh, something that was a little bit uh, like uh, frozen, <laughs> to say, uh, in the last few years. Now is the moment uh, to uh, strengthen the political the political um, relations, which uh, we. Uh, um, as I told you, uh, we are going to, to do with the political consultations in November. Uh, we should move ahead with the two, or the two or three different agreements, maybe in the cultural, cultural field, there is one agreement pending, um, even if a visa waiver for diplomatic passports, it is also pending. Um, uh, so these are some agreements that I would like to move ahead with 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 the the, 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 the finalize the negotiations and then the signature and the entry into force of these agreements. Um, another area it will be uh, which is a challenge. It is the commercial relation is very is very is very imbalanced to the side of Pakistan. <laughs> so, but uh, uh, it is something that. Uh, I would like also to strengthen, as Ambassador said, uh, maybe COVID brought uh, some some improvements because now we can meet physically, but we can also meet in this kind of conferences. So, uh, which is very, very important. So sometimes it's not so easy to visit the Chamber of Commerce or, or to meet someone. And we have this this means that we are much that we're already there, but now we are much more used to 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 them and uh, so um, that's what the COVID <laughs> brought maybe as a positive as a positive thing. In my intervention I was going through the history of Portugal, you know, uh, we were independent in the 1143, uh, we are the oldest country in Europe in these actual, in the actual borders. It took uh, several centuries to settle completely 
in our in our borders. Uh, even in 1385, we had a battle with with Spain, more or less considered uh, the, the most important battle uh, battle in terms of the consolidation of our borders, because we are in the peninsula Iberia, Iberian Peninsula. So and Spain is much bigger than us. So we had the always. The, not uh, at that time we had the difficulty of dealing with a bigger bigger entity that that was Spain. Uh, in um, so in 1385 maybe it was the most one of the most important battle uh, in this context and it was afterwards in 1386 we celebrated which is interesting the treaty of Windsor with the with the uh, United Kingdom which was um, a treaty of peace and friendship, and it was strategically it was very important for us. It was because it was a, a way to balance, to balance the, press, the pressure of Spain with the support of the external power to, the, to this region, which was the UK. What which was it was a maritime power, so it was easy to well to, to go to come to Portugal to to give assistance, and the, it was far enough not to be a threat. To, to, to Portugal, so it was a balance in, in respect of our, uh, uh, our the pressure. But to, to say that we uh, we, we felt we, we, we Spain, we have outstanding infrastructures today in Portugal. Uh, we have everything to 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 create a business. We have very comfortable building buildings offices um, with great locations. And the prices are most competitive compared to other locations in Europe. So um, we have very good telecommunications. So what Portugal tried to do in the last 15 years, maybe, was to create an environment in a way that can it is good to so to see how Portugal is a good place to live and a good place to 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 spend holidays to, for tourism, a good place to, to do business. So uh, we try to, to to show Portugal as a, as a, in a, in a, as a, globally. I mean, say it's a, it's a place where you can have a good quality of life. So it is good for businessmen. It is good for students. It's good for for tourism. It has a fantastic climate, it has a, a very good infrastructures, it was it has very flexible laws for for investment, uh, it, it has the higher innovation institutions, uh, the Portuguese people are very welcoming, uh, food is fantastic, the climate is very good. So that was the idea we tried to to bring uh, uh, about uh, uh, about Portugal. Uh, I only would like to highlight one area is that it is precisely the, the issue of higher education because there are many destinations in the world and the, the world is very, of course very competitive. Uh, uh, every country likes to attract international students and uh, to improve their higher education institution. So, but just only some, some figures. Uh, I would like to, to, to give you, being of course a small country with uh, 10, 000, 10 million inhabitants, Portugal has 114 higher education institutions. We have 5,000 courses, uh, 350,000 students. We have uh, 307 research and development units in all domains of knowledge. We have. 12% foreign students. It's not uh, where we want to be. We hope to, 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 to go beyond this, but it is already uh, an interesting number. All Portuguese higher education institutions are assessed and accredited according to the highest international standards. I think in, in Pakistan, I think uh, it is also uh, very important and uh, um, I think Pakistan in this pandemic was able to, to, to take the correct measures and protect the population and um, uh, 
to protect the economy, to protect uh, the most poor people, and um, to take the right decisions at the right time. And uh, um, I think uh, we should con congratulate the Pakistan government to, uh, for in, that, in, in, in that regard. Thank you, thank you very much. So the first question um, is uh, coming from uh, Professor Kirajul Huda from Saudi Arabia. What they are asking is that uh, uh, how can we uh, manage uh, student uh, exchange uh, and then he's giving the example of uh, student exchange programs between Singapore and the European uh, and European universities. So uh, is there a possibility of student exchange programs between Pakistani universities and uh, uh, Portuguese <laughs> universities. We have the mission to, to strengthen the bilateral relations. Uh, at this moment, we, there are no exchange programs for students between Portugal and Pakistan. Um, but there is exactly one area in which uh, we should uh, try to, to, to bring together uh, the universities of both countries to create uh, programs in which Pakistani students can study in Portugal, uh, Portuguese studies students come to Pakistan, even teachers uh, uh, coming from Pakistan or Pakistani teachers going to Portugal to, to have, uh, for example, workshops or uh, small courses. It's very important. We cannot, we cannot strengthen the, the relation and the friendship without people-to-people -people contact. So we must try is to bring them together and to, to create these exchange programs. Mr. Babur Youssef, uh, who's based uh, uh, in San Francisco and Islamabad. And uh, his question is that uh, Pakistan and Portugal, both uh, countries are seeing a growth in uh, tech startups and venture capital. Is there a program to facilitate uh, the tech and digital sector between the two countries. In respect of startup uh, program, we don't have a bilateral Portugal-Pakistan startup program, but uh, the, the Portuguese government has a general startup program. Uh, it, we call it startup visa, and uh, we can. Uh, there is information in, in the web page of the embassy. We have information on that. The startup visa, in, in general terms, is. Uh, um, it is a program in which uh, the candidate presents a project, uh, a project uh, for a company or uh, for a business, and then this, if this project is sent to a Portuguese entity, to the Portuguese government, to Instituto in Portugal, and then they assess the project, they assess the potential of the of the project, and. Um, then they even can facilitate the um, offices for incubator. The interested person is, is, um, can apply for a startup visa to stay in Portugal and start the business in Portugal. This is a, a particular project in which the project is approved by the Portuguese entities and then the person has, uh, applies for the visa and, and, uh, and can go to, to, to Portugal to to develop in its, um, its, its, its business. Um, so that's a general program for, 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 um, for, for, all, for all countries. This question is coming from um, Sadaf uh, Khalid Khan, who is the director at uh, Walnut uh, Travel Tours and Consultancy in Islamabad. How can we promote uh, Lisbon, Portu and, uh, Lisbon, Portugal as a tourist destination uh, for the Pakistani tourists traveling to Lisbon? Uh, can the embassy facilitate and connect us to top tour operators in Lisbon and also explore other business uh, B2B opportunities uh, between Pakistan and Portugal? The embassy is providing all consular services now already um, in visas and uh, other, other issues. In re but in respect of the, of the visas due to, to, to the COVID um, situation, still 
uh, still uh, this is a uh, the European Union level uh, still we are limited what what we call essential travel so tourists we are not completely open to tourists yet uh, we hope to I, I hope at least in the next two months to to that uh, European Union countries in general and then in particular Portugal is completely open for tourism well, tourism is uh, 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 very, very important for Portugal. So, 20% uh, of the Portuguese GDP is about the tourism. Now, it was a bit before the, the pandemic about tourism. So, it's uh, one of the uh, main, the main priority for us in terms of uh, commercial and uh, um, uh, trade relations, is, is services. <laughs> I uh, will now request uh, our chairman, Mr. Ikram Segal, uh, uh, to, uh, to conclude the session. Excellency, uh, thank you very much. Uh, this has been a most informative and an educative session. And uh, before I thank all the participants and the panelists, I would just like to uh, say a few things. I am not a stranger to Portugal in the sense that I first went there in 2017 uh, to uh, speak at the Horasis uh, meeting in Kashkai. And I've been in 2017, 18 and 19. And Kashkai is a beautiful place. And of course, I learned a lot about Portugal uh, in visiting Kashkai because I also found out that Kashkai has got, uh, for IT, in the school children, it's got 100% uh, IT, right? And in fact, a lot of your startups and things like that are based in Kashke and the, uh, the mayor of Kashke and etc. They were so uh, assertive about startups, about inviting investment. It was, it was really amazing. And uh, I must thank, of course, uh, uh, gentleman, Dr. Frank Richter, who is the head of Oasis, which basically is known as a mini uh, uh, World Economic Forum now, because basically it concentrates on Europe and China, and but it has done a lot of work. And it, for me, it was a revelation uh, to visit uh, Portugal for the first time. Now, um, I would tell you uh, also something personal, that my own secretary, executive secretary, who's been with me for 17 years, uh, she is married to a person of Portuguese descent, uh, in fact, from uh, Mr. Richard Gasper, who also works for me in a different company. So that is another connection that I have. Yes. Uh, the third connection is, of course, uh, you know, I must tell you about Portugal is that in the second trip, I took my daughter, uh, Nefer, with me. And uh, Nefer has been with me, traveled all over Europe, we've been by road uh, all over Europe. And she, when she reached Portugal, after some time, she said, I'm home. I'm home. And I asked her why, because, you know, there are very nice uh, restaurants in Paris, there are very beautiful views in Switzerland and and, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. She says the people are very friendly. And she said, I can eat whatever I feel like. And, you know, I, the thing, the people are very friendly. There's no, for me, it's easy to communicate. And, you know, I was encouraged then, of course, to, uh, you know, and she said, I want me to uh, have a property for me. I would like it in uh, in, uh, in Portugal. And she's got a property now in Lisbon. So that's very personal for me. I must tell you, the first time I came, and it's a very interesting thing, I came across people of Portuguese descent. I was uh, 50 years ago, almost to the day, uh, I was flying uh, the governor of uh, East Pakistan, then Admiral Assen, uh, after a very catastrophic cyclone, uh, which almost killed 3 million people in the Bay of Bengal. And I was flying them to the islands of the Bay of Bengal. And I, I landed in an island called Bola. And, uh, you know, I was very tired and the governor walked out to visit people and I, I fell asleep and I woke up, you know, by this thing I saw a lot of children having green eyes. <laughs> so, so I was very intrigued by this. I said, you've got people of different color green eyes. And I found that these were descendants of Portuguese pirates who had settled in the Bay of Bengal in islands, right? Yeah. So can you imagine <laughs> going back so many years, you talk about Vasco de Gama, you know, they came as traders and then with them came the pirates also. And you know, this was a great area of Bay of Bengal, etc. So I think we have a lot that we have to uh, talk about, uh, uh, you know, between Portugal and Pakistan. And uh, obviously, uh, we will certainly like you when you come here. You know, I must uh, tell you with great uh, uh, 
uh, the things that we have as a Karachi Council Coordination and along with uh, Jinnah Society, we've taken over the Qaeda Azam House Museum, which is known as the Flat Tap House, to build a nation building institute. We are building a world class auditorium, audiovisual center, of which, incidentally, uh, Mr. Arshad Saeed Khan is going to be the head of that particular committee. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, so, you know, we will certainly in future hold whenever there is the pandemic, things not there, other than webinars, we're going to have seminars in that location. Uh, it is my duty uh, to thank, uh, uh, you know, first of all, I will start with uh, Ambassador Zara. Uh, it, it, it was very informative, um, Ambassador Zara. I'm only sorry that I missed you in Portugal. You know, I was there in 2017, about the time later on we left, but we should have connected. I think we would have a lot in common that time. Uh, thank you very much. It was very informative. And I hope uh, that, you know, you will be a regular uh, participant of our webinars in the future. We will certainly let you know. We'll keep you on the list so that you keep informed. Uh, then uh, I must uh, thank uh, the moderator, uh, Mr. Ashish Saeed uh, You know, uh, you know, he's taken Oxford University to a new height. There's no doubt about it. You know, Oxford University really has come on its own. And literary festivals, despite the pandemic, despite the pandemic, have been so well received, so well distinct, both in Karachi and Islamabad, uh, that it is amazing. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the day when you know, people, the pandemic eases and people really get together and more and more people come because I think uh, the Oxford University Press really contributes a great deal to the education of Pakistan, really. And beyond the education of Pakistan, the education of the people of Pakistan, the books they print, the books on history, geography, literature, other than the textbooks, and uh, the books on fiction, even, uh, which, are, uh, which are projecting Pakistan's culture, image, etc., are tremendous. Uh, I must thank uh, the Secretary General, uh, Commodore Sadiq Malik, uh, basically a submariner, but has been really, speaks French very fluently. Uh, he has been uh, uh, in, uh, he's been actually educated in a French institute also uh, from the Pakistan Navy side. And, you know, uh, really I tell you, uh, he is the backbone of Karachi Council for Foreign Relations. Without him, we would have gone nowhere. He has, the amount of work he has done, and actually I, 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 I must, commend him for the amount of work that he has done. And it's really a matter of great pride of me. We go back almost uh, almost uh, uh, 50 years, not more than 50 years, uh, 50, 55, 56 years, I think. You know, when we were both in the military academy together, I as an army cadet and he as a naval cadet, we were both together in the military academy in Kapoor. So there's a long association that we have. Uh, Excellency, how can I think? You know, it's been more than prompt. We are supposed to have one hour, we one past one hour, because of the fact that we really want to have learned a lot. And I hope this will be the uh, beginning of a long association with you, a long association with you. Because it really, you know, we need to know more about uh, Portugal, and Portugal needs to know more of Pakistan. The interaction must be much more. We are much more in common than people realize. And for many reasons, like you said, uh, Vasco de Gama was the first one into the Indian Ocean, uh, trying to discover the, uh, you know, the East and whatever. But the point is that uh, the amount of uh, we have in common, we've never really leveraged it. We've never taken it to scale. You've spoken about something, tourism, startups, etc. We ourselves uh, were thinking of it, some business opportunities there. But the ma main thing is that they on the broad level, on a broad level, Pakistan and Portugal must engage, must engage. And uh, we are very grateful for this presentation that you did. We're very grateful for question and answer. And I hope uh, we will go uh, beyond that. So I now request from Mr. Sadiq Malik with that, with the thanking you most profusely uh, to end the webinar.